Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. It's nice to see you once again. And uh, well, tomorrow is the last Friday that we will be together and then on Monday we'll finish. Remember that you will be receiving the INSA Forbes survey. Also remember to finish the platform by next Sunday. And uh, well, let's check about the platform, of course. So this is the class of tonight. And there you will find the question for tonight. So if you want to participate. Okay, and as usual, we are going to check about the attendance. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. <coughs> William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Ok, Roxana. Jessica Janari Cortez Díaz. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. En Erwin Lago Santrade. Present teacher. Very good. Okay, so um, let's start tonight. And the first question I have for you is, uh, oh, got you, Francisco. Let me just check into that. Okay, so uh, we've been speaking about providing training and teaching adults and many things like that. So tonight we're going to speak a little bit about evaluating the training. So how can we evaluate the training that we have delivered? Okay, we can we can evaluate the training. Uh by the uh, doing a task that is uh, related to the training. I okay. think do, doing something is important. And then uh, we can evaluate also with uh, a survey or a quiz or a, or a test. Uh, that is important as if, you, if we are interested in, in concepts, in, in, in ideas, uh, we need a, a survey, we need a, a test, a quiz, but if we are interested in, in, in uh, facts, in, in doing something, in the people knows how to do something, uh, we need to evaluate doing, knowing that uh, thing that we one day can do. It is important, like in the past session that we are doing like managing calls with the hard clients. So something like that, it is important. If we want that they can do something, we can evaluate in that way. But these oral concepts, ideas, they can do a test or a survey, I think. 
Okay, very good. So yeah, that's uh, increase some as some kind of popular, but yeah, I believe it's not the big deal. And you are right. We can evaluate. I mean, depending on what we are going to evaluate, it could be. I mean, if we want to evaluate if the students or if the audience they really learn something, yeah, they have to go and do something about it, to a task, to homework, anything like that. The survey, the good thing about the survey is that you will be able to ask opinions, right? It's like, what do you think? How did you feel? Things like that one. And it's going to help us um, improving our training, not the task itself or if the student really understood what they have to do, but this, the training itself, the workshop, anything that we have. There. So, very good. So, the next question is, imagine that we're gonna deliver a survey. Uh, what would you ask? What kind of question would you include in that one? What kind of survey you will send? What kind of survey? What kind of well, survey? Uh -huh. Yes, we need to know by, uh, about the reception of the information, uh, the, the method, the methodology, or uh, how was the 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 instructor are formed or how was uh, her development or his development in the, in the trainer and how was the uh, audiovisual materials or the, the activities or how was perceived by, by the by the audience or by the persons in the training and uh, we need to ask about the timing, about the, the environment, about, uh, we need to know why, how was the act, attitude of the person in the training. And we need to ask about that things, about how was perceived information, how was managed the, the information, the, the activities and all the things in the training, I think. Okay, very good. So yeah, there are many things that we can ask depending on what we think that we need to improve, right? Uh, opinions are very important. And uh, uh, do you believe that it's a good idea to do that anonymously or to know who say something? Uh, it, it is important that uh, what we are looking for, if we want only the information and we, could be done in anonymous, but if we want to know by by department by by a, a areas of the company, maybe we can ask for for the name of the survey, the person who fills the survey. I think it, it is important. Mostly is anonymous, but we are only. Uh, interested in, in how was the training. But if we need to know what uh, department, what uh, areas need to be reinforced, uh, I can ask the, the names. Very good, that is true. So depending on what we really want and depending on, uh, yeah, there are people from different departments and we would like to know if it's going to be useful for them or not or things I want. So depending on that kind of situation, we can decide. Okay, so, so the topic of today is about essential questions to us in a survey. So the survey for you to evaluate the training. Our training survey questions and play will help you get action of student experience in size and identify positive testimonial success. Training, training evaluation questions help you get actionable feedback on your training program, helping you refine your offering to improve the learning experience for future students. But why should you ask? And when should you ask it? So let's check into that one, okay? We're gonna start, let's see. Yeah, the introduction is going to be for David. Okay, why ask, ask training evaluation questions? By asking training evaluation questions to group participants, you can get constructive feedback on your course design, delivery, and content helping you refine your training course and make it even better. Training evaluation 
questions can tell you more about customers' opinions on your training method, your tools and resources, your course structure, your course content, your assessment method, technical delivery, and more. A training evaluation survey can help to change your course to your learners' needs and make, I didn't see the, the, the rest of the line, and make your training program more effective. Very good. So what do you get on this one? OK, yes, of course. Uh, we need to know about uh, how do we do, how do we do the, the, the training and uh, how it was perceived because uh, I can talk and talk and talk and I can talk and many important information, but if uh, the people this didn't receive it, it doesn't matter what, what important is. Uh, I, I need to make sure that uh, the people is receiving what uh, we are trying to transmit to them. And for that reason, it's important uh, to, to take this experience of the past and to make better the, the, the seminars in the, in the future. And it, maybe it is important uh, to do some previous question before the training to, to get prepared the people for, for the they want to receive the training. Maybe sometimes it is important make some expectations a survey at the beginning for preparing the, the people to, for the training, I think. But it is important to know how do we do or how do we deal the, the training. Very good. So that is true. And you are so very right. I mean, sometimes it's a good idea to, to send some questions to check a diagnostic, right, to see um, how they are, if they know something about this topic and uh, what are their expectations. So that is a very good idea, definitely. Good. So it says three main stages of a training evaluation survey. Okay, this one is going to be for Erwin Lagos. <clears throat> three main stages of training evaluation survey. When you are conducting a training evaluation survey, it helps to break your survey down into the three characteristics. Before the course, find out what you participate are hoping to learn and how they, uh, they read to pre-course process. During the course, get evaluation and your course design include content, structure, and delivery. And after the course, receive the feedback on, of the course overall, as well as learning satisfaction, satisfaction and your follow-up process. You might choose the conduct, the conduct, the survey at end of the course as a serious as smaller training evaluation surveys through the course. Is always this allowed <clears throat> you receive continuous engages feedback from courses participate, which whichever you choose, make sure you add a clear call to action when there is an opportunity to provide a feedback of the course improved training evaluation survey participation. Like we've seen the course player experience as or as a automatic email. Very good. So what do you get on this one? And teacher, I think that you have a, a for example, you have a, you give a audience, okay, the audience for the information, and you need to know the feedback about the, the how, if, if the goals, you can, you can do the goals when you, the, when you uh, gave the presentation. If you, if you have a, a, a I evaluate about the goals that you did. Okay, perfect. But um, all all people, uh, all the people, we are not a perfect. Okay, we are not perfect. All the time we have to think that we have to be the best in the future. And when you have a survey and you have a you will have a the feedback information that how oops, sorry, how can I do more in the future. 
very good. So you are so right. I mean, yes. there is always room for improvement, right? Even though you are a specialist and you have been to a lot of courses and trainings, yeah, there is room for improvement all the time. It's very interesting because these are the three main stages of trainings evaluation service. So before the course to find out what are hoping, what they expect, right? So, and rate the pre-course process. I mean, how was the signing process? Uh, the papers were clear and things like that. During the course, of course, that is very important because it's about the course design, the content, the structure, the delivery, the trainer, and things like that. And of course, after the course, like receiving feedback of the course overall, as well as learning satisfaction about the process. So definitely these are three things that we can get into this. So survey question types. Uh, this is for Jose Rivas. Not possible. Let's see, Ileana Giselle. Okay, teacher. Survey question types. It's important to give your respondents space to express their opinions without using leading questions. To do so, you might like to use a combination of open ended questions, rating scale questions, and Likert scale questions. What is Likert scale questions? Yeah, actually, if you continue reading, you will see that. Yeah, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you're right. Well, uh, from number one, open open ended questions. Evaluators type out a qualitative response, useful when you want details and specific feedback. Rating scales. Evaluators give you a quantitative rating between uh, one to five or one to 10. These are useful when you don't need a descriptive answer, like overall satisfaction. Likert scales. Evaluators answer on a scale of strongly disagree to strongly agree. Useful to getting a holistic view of opinions and includes a neutral midpoint. Okay, what do you get into this part? Mm, that is very important maybe to use a different type of survey of survey questions you can do like a mix of for example of the three types uh, uh, survey questions so you can get a, a lot of information but like from these different perspectives or like from different um yeah like a point of view but um qualitative and quantitative information so you can ask uh, questions to your to to the people and they pues they they will um uh, gonna give your their answers and i think that maybe the most important about this is to get a important information that you can use to to improve your um, your your um, training. Very good. So that is the main objective, right? To to improve. And the good thing about this one is that we have different types of questions. So, and now we know that depending on what we want to know. I mean, if you want to know qualitative things about that one, then you are going to. Uh, provide open and question. Then uh, you can use the rating skills. I mean, how satisfied are you? One to five or one to 10 or one to a hundred, whatever, any scale. And the last one is also very popular nowadays, the Likers skills. Like I strongly disagree on this or I strongly agree. So those are very, very popular right now. In a lot of service you are going to find that. So, and depending on what you want to do, you can mix these kind of things. Okay, uh, questions to ask students before taking the course. Okay, uh, this part is going to be for, let's see, Roberto Luis Umaña. Not possible, Jessica Janari. 
Not possible. Let's see. Jose Wilfredo Ayala. Not possible either. Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Uh, okay. Question to ask a student before taking the course. That, that, that is the topic, yeah. no? Yeah, okay. that one and the next one as well. Okay. Uh, use, use training evaluation question before your course starts to get a clearer picture of what your learners have to achieve by taking your course. You can also conduct a training evaluation survey to assess how well your customer onboarding process is. Learner expectations. Asking training evaluation questions that focus on your learners' expectations before the start of the course allows, allows you to get a clearer idea on what content they want to see. These types of training evaluation questions can help you to understand how your course matches up to what people are looking for and give you the opportunity to tweak your course as need. Very good. What do you get on this one? Uh, that that is this this is before before a training. Uh, when you start a training, uh, this is it's very common that you are maybe asking what what we 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 will see in that course. I know the topic. Maybe I receive maybe a, a brochure with the main topics and. Um, more or less, I, I know what will be uh, studying in this course, but uh, it's very important that maybe the, the, tra the trainer, the trainer can maybe ask to the, to the learners what are the expectations, what, uh, what they wait in this course to learn. And maybe that can help you to how did the students start this course? Very good. So that is it. I mean, uh, this is like a diagnostic thing that uh, is going to provide you the feedback about what kind of knowledge they have already, what do they expect to have, what kind of material they expect to have uh, in, during the training, how long they expect it's going to be, and many things, many things. Not only opinions, but also facts about exactly what they know about the topic that you are going to provide. So it's a very good starting point. Of course, this uh, requires time, right? Not only to create the survey, but also to analyze uh, before that one. So these are some ideas for uh, questions. Um, let's see who's gonna read that. William Ramirez, is it possible for you? Not possible. Uh, let's see, Heidi. Sure, teacher. This one that says try these ideas, right? Yeah, please. Okay. Try these ideas for pre-course training evaluation questions to help you drill down on what learners really want. What they are, what are your key learning objectives for this course? How confident are you are you that the course will deliver on the learning objectives? What are your motivations for taking the course? And at the end of the course, what did you hope to have achieved? What topics in particular are you hoping will be covered in the course? What types of learning do you like best? What areas of topic do you struggle with the most? What are the biggest barriers do you achieve achieving your learning goals? Have you completed any other training in this field before taking this course? How do you hope this course will improve your previous education experiences? Okay, uh, what ideas do you have about these questions or what other questions you might use before the, the training? Well, actually for me, the training is just the, um, uh, a, like a tool, right? But the real, the real, the real time is when you are going to be practiced. So uh, I have seen this question that if I believe that that training helped me to improve my skills, I have seen okay. that question. 
in some trainings. Or what okay. would I um, would I ask for for uh, adding to this training or change to this training or suggestions about getting a better training? Very good. So yeah, actually you are so right. Uh, yesterday we were checking that adults they want to be involved, right, in the process of the training. So. Yeah, it's a very good idea to ask what kind of dynamic would you like? Do, would you like to do these sort of, sort of things? Those things are important before the solving. Good. So course preparation. Uh, this one is going to be for Ana Claudia. Okay. So I'm sorry, course preparation? Yeah, please. Okay, once the course has started, you can also ask for feedback on the pre-course preparation. This is important to make sure you are making a good first impression and hitting your onboarding targets. Here are some pre-courses training evaluation questions, examples to try. How easy was it to enroll in the course? How would you rate the pre-training process? What was missing from the process? How could the preparation process be improved? Was the course description easy to understand? Were the learning goals clearly stated before the start of the course? Was it clear what the course included? How would you rate customer service communication before the course? How would you rate the course onboarding process? How could the pre-courses communication have been improved? Okay, what do you get from this part? Uh, it's very important to have most of these questions are the ones that I get every time I make a online course. Remember that in my company, I, they <laughs> love <laughs> to for us to make courses every week, and it doesn't matter if it's a a new process or a, a new. A, advertising coming up or any change, they always uh, convert it into a course. And in that way, they make sure that everybody is aware and acknowledged. And, and these questions, most of them, they are very important. And in fact, I can tell you that I've been seeing changes in the way how they, uh, how they teach or they launch the courses because um, I can tell you last year, the courses were bored. They were changing the, the, the format and then they were too dynamic. But at the end, now the format they are uh, using, I love it because it's short, it's clear, big letters, not a lot of musical dynamic thing. It, it's better to have clear phrases and they take when they um, uh, review all the uh, precursor training evaluation also they make sure that if for us it was easy to enroll and stuff like that and that is very important because also people is not frustrated and remember that you need to take in consideration that some people will take the course or the training over the phone or maybe over a computer it will be better but sometimes they have like a tablet and it's not easy so that is the reason why they need to have all these type of questions to understand if the process they did uh, fits or cover or cover all the audience they are trying to reach Okay, very good. Actually, something that you say is, I mean, the core of this one. I mean, if you see changes in the way that they are delivering the mm -hmm. uh, courses, this is working, right? They are listening. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, I believe that almost always um, happens that there are service and you send it and you three, four times you send the same comment and nothing happens, right? So, mm -hmm. but whenever the companies, they take action, Definitely, this is working. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes, my company happens in that way. And now it's a smooth format, clear, big letters, and they are not, 
I can tell you last year there, there was a point that it was like a competition whoever who was making the best video for this trend oh my god it was at the end it was I don't know bored uh, you are tired of these things because uh, that is not a television show what you need is to learn the new process or be aware of this and that and I think they took in consideration all of that yeah that is very important definitely so whenever they listen and they change things everybody is improving and everybody's happier right mm -hmm. and, you, and you notice you notice that one that yes. your opinion is also important and well also it's very interesting i mean whenever you receive a survey before the training with questions like this uh, it hits you very well it's very professional right it's like mm -hmm. oh this company is very good i mean they care even before we start a course so mm -hmm. yeah they, uh, that opens our mind so it's going to be a very good idea mm -hmm. good so this is about during the course let's see uh, Jarvin Isaac okay teacher question to ask a student during the course of course any effective training evaluation surveys also need to include questions about the course itself includes the lyric content and the overall structure after every lecture, you can deliver a training evaluation survey to find out how if and how the lesson is helping to participant reach this learning objectives. You could, you could also use training evaluation surveys to see if learners understood the content of the course. Here are some examples of the good training evaluation question to help you're listening to the audience and tap into their perspectives. Okay, what do you get from this part? Okay, this this question can you help the, the who is teaching the training if the content of the training is impact the person that are learning. Of course, you can show or you can know who are really pay attention about the, the training, right? Because some person I, I have to say that it's only listen and not learning about that. Very true. So that is it. I mean, definitely we need to evaluate things that happen during the course, right? Like if the objectives were clear, if we you believe that we achieve the objectives, uh, uh, if the content was fine, the structure, if it was clear, and uh, I mean, sometimes you don't think about some things that are relevant for people, like Ana Claudia say, I mean, the size of the letter sometimes that is important. I mean, things like that are important. Okay, course content. That is going to be for Suleyma Yvonne. Not possible. Let's check Roxana Asensio. Okay, course content. Continuously improving course content is a really effective way to make sure your course delivers what it promise, promises and matches up against the comp competition. A training evaluation survey is a great method to get valu valuable feedback on your course content. If you, if you want to find out more about the quality of your course content, try these training evaluation questions. Did the course content align? Is correct align? Align, yeah. Okay, align with your expectation. How will you rate the quality of the course content? How engage, engaging, engaging was the course content? <clears throat> How satisfied were, were you with the variety of the course content? Was the course content easy to understand? What the course content detailed enough for your needs? Was the content, was the course content helpful? Was the course content rep repetitive? 
How satisfied were you with the methods of assessment? What was missing from the course content? Okay, what do you get on that one? Well, it's important try to uh, try to uh, assimilate if the content of the course, for for example, has um, uh, audience. Uh, in a moment, I need to ask by myself. Is correct, like that? Yeah, by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes, uh, or in a specific moment, uh, I need to ask by myself if the course content is accorded for my needs. So, for example, if I'm looking for a different job um, and I need to improve my marketing skills, maybe, I need to look for a course that satisfy my needs in that moment, or maybe if I need to um, understand how, um, how, how I need to use, um, I don't know, maybe a, 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 some, some apps or um, some tools for, for my work, I need to look for a specific um, uh, training for that. But it's important when it has an audience, uh, you uh, have your uh, goals in the clear way, because uh, not only is uh, looking for a training, general training, you need to look for a training that you need and has a presenter, you need to give a training uh, according to the content. I mean, uh, if you are uh, working with um, English, you need to, uh, in the first one, you need to, you need to uh, know your, um, your team, and according to to your participants, maybe you you can uh, share information, but you need to uh, be honest with the content in the training because if you offer uh, a specific uh, content, you need to apply the topic in the same way. So uh, I think that it's it's both has the presenter uh, give a uh, give the, the correct uh, content according to the, to the goals or, or objectives and has uh, audience I need to look for a training that uh, I need. Okay, very good. So yes, definitely. So we need to evaluate everything, right? Like the content, the trainer, um, how the, uh, the goals were achieved, uh, things like that one. So, and uh, well, there are just a few questions here, but depending on what kind of training you are delivering or workshop, of course, you can change this one or you can use the other ones that are like uh, with a scale, right? So depending on what you want to know. Mm -hmm. Good course structure. Uh, let's see, this is going to be for David. Okay, course structure. Asking questions about the course structure also gives you a chance to gain insights into your learning path and any obstacles experienced by learners along the way. Here are some training evaluation questions, examples to give you a hand in designing your survey. How would you rate the course structure? How satisfied were you with the flow of the course? Was the course structure manager, manageable? Was the course easy to complete? What is clear when one unit ended and a new one started? Were the course might still clear? 
did you feel like you were making adequate progress through the course? Did you feel equally engaged in every section of the course? Which, which sections of the course worked best? How satisfied were you with the number of assessments? Okay, what do you get in that one? Okay, it, it, it is important uh, at the end, the people who attend the course is the, is the goal, the main goal, uh, even though the objectives, even though the purpose of, even though the, the training missions, the, the people in the, in the course is uh, our big goal, how they feel, how they perceive, how they uh, finish the course, it, it is important. We need to know and uh, uh, how they uh, are learning because in, in that way, we, we know uh, some ways that uh, we are doing well or we are doing bad or we are doing not so well. And uh, it is important. Uh, and there are some questions that are uh, only give an idea how satisfied were you with the flow of the courses. It's some general question, but when when you ask uh, which section of the course worked best, uh, system, we are going to the point. Uh, did you feel like you were making adequate progress to the course? So yeah, are questions important to, to uh, clarify? The object is the objective was uh, rich enough or not. We need to know the it's not only make a survey. We need to know what kind of survey, what kind of questions we need to ask to the people. Definitely. So that is so true. It's not just that you are going to pass through the survey and that's it. We need to understand what really what we really want to know, right? And uh, of course, at the end, there are there might be a, a space for comments, free comments, and things like that. But yeah, we need to to analyze what are the questions that we're going to have. It's not just to put a question and that's it. Okay, course delivery. That one is going to be for Jarvin Isaac. Not possible. Let's see, Dora Elizabeth. Course delivery, as well as arranging the structure of the course, is it also important to ask questions about the course delivery in your training evaluation survey. The quality of the delivery is crucial to the success for, of, you, of your course, as that is how learners will receive the training. This question will help to find ROF your course in engaging and welcoming and accessible. To find out more about your course delivery, try asking this training evaluation question. How would you rate the course, course delivery? Were the course materials engaging? Was the course delivery accessible? How would you tell, how would you create the opportunities for collaboration during the course. Did the course meet your expectative in, for interactivity? Would you have preferred more or less interactivity? How could this course, how could this, the course delivery be improved? Was the science of your training group appropriate? Did the course feel calm welcoming? Did you feel like you were part of community during the during the, cur the course? Okay, what do you get on that one? Uh, I think is this paragraph is referred to uh, when the course is a uh, for email. I don't know if it's perfect. Yes. It could be for anything. Yeah. Ah, well, uh, 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 the, the important thing is to know the, uh, the community, uh, 
uh, the course is a uh, uh, addressing uh, 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 making a uh, do all the all the questions described in, in this part. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, these are questions like about the course itself, right? It was accessible. Uh, did you meet your expectations? Um, how can be improved? Many ways like that one. So the next one is also important part, the course and structure. This one is going to be for Jose Rivas. Not possible. Ileana Giselle. Okay, teacher. Course and structure. Your training evaluation questions should also include a space for learners to share their experience with your course instructors. While you might be reluctant to hear what participants have to say about your instruction, especially if you're the one delivering the course, this section of your training evaluation survey shall not be missed. Here are some training evaluation questions, examples to use. How satisfied were you with the level of instruction you were given? How would you rate your instructor's delivery of the course material? How effective were your instructor's communication skills? How would you rate your instructor's expertise? Was it easy to ask your instructor questions? How comfortable did you feel expressing problems to your instructor? How confident were you in the instructor's ability to help you? How would you rate the quality of the feedback you received from your instructor? Did your instructor meet your expectations? How could the quality of the instruction be improved? Okay, what do you get on this one? Mm, you can, can you please put the first paragraph? Thank you. Mm, that, um, let me see. Mm -mm -mm. That uh, this part will help uh, a lot because uh, you can know what uh, the participants think about your training. So uh, with these questions, you can know uh, uh, information. For example, uh, sometimes it's difficult to ask to the participants some some things. So. And sometimes the participants doesn't feel that like they can share their opinions. So these questions could help to, to, to get uh, information that at the end, like the paragraph said, especially if you are the one delivering the course, you can know uh, what the participant think about, about the, the, the material of the course, for example, or maybe the method that you use in the course or the topics that you, that you give to the participants uh, in the training. Um, maybe also uh, you as instructor sometimes can share a, some experience or some things uh, that maybe you ex experiment yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, maybe that that at the end this is very helpful because you can improve your 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 training or your course uh, depending of the participants. Uh, what? Uh, okay. Sorry, depending of the opinion of the participants of the of your course. Very good. So that is it. So these questions are related to the instructor, to the person that is actually delivering the course, right? And yeah, I believe all of those are very relevant. So uh, the expertise uh, was easy to approach to the instructor. Um, how was it? Was he confident? Uh, 
all of these are important. So uh, the person that is providing the course is also, it will be uh, able to improve as well. So the next one is for timing, which is also a very important thing. Roberto Luis. Not possible. Um, Fernando Ernesto Cosmo. Uh, course time. Yeah, please. Uh, you might also like to include questions on the duration of the course in your training evaluation survey. This will give you feedback on, on your learning path, helping you to decide whether your course needs more content or could do with being broken down, broken down into several different courses. Uh, just this target training evaluation questions to get opinion of your course length, including how long did, did it take for, your, for you to complete the course in full? On average, how long did, did, did it take you to complete each lesson? Uh, did you take an equal amount of time to complete each lesson? If no, which lesson took the longest to complete? How satisfied were you, were you with the length of each lesson? Did the length of the course fit your expectations? Were you able to fit your learning around your other commitments? Was there any point during the course where you were forced to pause? How satisfied were you with the length of the course assessment? Were you able to complete the assessment to allow time? Okay, what do you get on this one? Uh, when it's very common when you finish a, a training to receive a feedback for from your maybe your your how do you say your the participants. Yeah. Uh, the, maybe they they had some doubts about the course, and we we ask uh, we have ourselves uh, maybe how or maybe how much we we learn about this course. Uh, see if uh, the course comp uh, the course. Uh, uh, reach the expectation that I had in that time when I start. Uh, the time that I spent in this course, uh, maybe it's a, it's a feedback for the for the next time that the course will be able to to take again for another or maybe participants. That's okay, it. very good. Yeah, actually, that is the main purpose of the service, right? To improve so the next time that you are going to deliver this training you know a little bit more and yes time is something very important was good enough would you need more time and everything was within the same the time that is supposed to be uh, some parts maybe they need more time to be delivered or we need time for other kind of activities so time is also very important whenever you are delivering this one Okay, the next one says a learning experience and course design. Um, this is going to be for William Ramirez. Is it possible for you? Not possible. Hey, Ana Claudia. Of course. Learning. Yes, one. Okay. Learning experience and course design. Um, when it comes to online learning, the quality of the learning experience matters a lot. Few learners will have the patience to take an online course if the learning platform is not functioning properly. That means it's really important to get feedback on the UX, UI, I don't know what's that, for your course so you can address problems as quickly as possible. Try asking these questions in your training evaluation survey. How would you rate the user experience of the course? 
Was the platform easy to use? Did you find the interface intuitive? Was, I'm sorry, was it easy to navigate through the course? What three words come to mind when you think about the course design? Did you find the layout confusing? Did you find the layout straightforward? How would you rate the course platform? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let me read that again. How would you rate the course platform compared to other platforms you've used in the past? How satisfied were you with the overall user experience of the platform? How could the course design be improved? Okay, what do you get on this one? I sustain the same that I uh, mentioned before because exactly that is what uh, after every course uh, we do. And I can tell you that one of the things they change is that always there is a, an assessment. And the assessment, sometimes the courses were 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And at the end, making an assessment, you don't remember what you learn, even though you take notes. And the one thing they change, and I feel is a good change, is that if there is a, a long course and it will be taking 15 minutes, 20 minutes, is divided in different um, different topics. But after you complete every topic, there are three to four questions as an assessment. And that makes you better understanding and you um, retain what you learn. And it's easy it's for your comprehension. And at the end, the whole uh, evaluation is based on all the uh, mini assessments you may do in the course. It's very important to, to make questions at the end of the learning experience. Okay, very good. So yes, I mean, what you say is very important as well. I mean, sometimes the design of the course need to, to change, right? And mm -hmm. to have a, an assessment of 20 minutes, that is too much, I guess. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, three oh, no, questions. No, the course was 20 minutes, and after 20 minutes, you uh, uh -huh. need to complete the assessment. So at the end, you don't remember what you've learned. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah, it's totally, uh, I mean, that happens, that happens. And the good thing is that they are changing that one. Mm -hmm. So this uh, part is about the course accessibility. So this is going to be for Jarvin Isaac. Not possible. So lay my phone. Roxana, sense you. I'm here. Oh. Wait. Wait. Um, courses accessibility. If yeah. you design in a course, it it's also important to bear to bear in mind the needs of different learners. Adding accessibility question to your training evaluation survey can help to you improve your course and make it more inclu inclusive. No, no, I, I don't know. Range of learning needs. <clears throat> Here are some ideas for training evaluation question center on accessibility. How satisfied were, let, permit me. Of course. Uh, sorry. Here are some ideas for training, training evaluation questions centered on accessibility. How satisfied were you with the course's overall accessibility? How satisfied were you with the courses, the course audio? <clears throat> were you able to adjust the volume to your needs? Was the course tape wise easily to read? How satisfied were you with the colors used throughout the course? How satisfied were you with the front size 
throw out the curse? Were you able to interact with the curse in a way that suit, suit? Su suited? Suited, thank you. Suited your needs. What accessibility, accessibility, accessibility features did you feel were lacking from the curse? Did you receive the accessibility support you need during the curse? What additional accessibility feature could improve the curse? Okay, what do you get into this one? Uh, well, uh, it's important uh, be or have clear some some points uh, according to the accessibility for uh, in a curse. Uh, for example, if you uh, are receiving a training or a curse for um, Zoom like this, and the first one uh, has a company or has a presenter, uh, you need to be clear if you have the correct tools to, in, to, to work in on, on the course or in the training. Uh, if you uh, have the correct uh, space to develop the training or the course, and if you don't have any problems with the audio, with the, I don't know, the, the sounds around you, and as well as an has a audience, you need to uh, evaluate if also your uh, space is according to that um, situation. Imagine uh, if you uh, receive a training or a course, uh, if you don't have uh, any specific space or any specific time to develop the training, you don't get the information as you need because you need, you need to uh, be focused on that. But if around you always uh, you don't have the correct or the adequate uh, environment, you don't get the, the training has uh, you need. So it's important try to uh, try to identify uh, if a presenter you have the correct uh, tools and if an uh, audience you have the correct space to. Okay, very good. So yes, I mean, uh, accessibility is a very important part of the course and we need to be sure that everything is working properly, right? So actually the next one is technical questions. So, but before that one, we're going to check the attendance. Okay, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Sorry, teacher. Present. Present. Fernando Cosme. Ah, ok. Good. Gotcha. Hey, Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Hi, Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. Here. 
Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. And Erwin Lago Central. Present teacher. Okay. So let's continue with this. Okay, I got to do that here. Yeah, about the service. So just move on. Okay. Okay, the next one says technical questions. That is going to be for let me just check. Marco Sayala. Okay, technical question. You might want to include technical question in your training evaluation survey. This can help you to identify any technical faults that may be preventing learners from accessing your course resource. Here are some sample training evaluation survey questions for technical problems. How satisfied were you with the technical delivery of the course? Did you experience any problem with the course logging? Were you aware of technical faults or blue during the course? Did all the external links work? Were you able to access the course be, by uh, the, uh, your mobile or tablet? Did you notice any light or lag in the delivery of the course content? Did the video content load in your device? Were you able to download the resources? Were you able to view all the image and graphic in the in this in the course? How satisfied were you with the quality of the technical trouble showing? Okay, what do you get on that one? Okay. Uh, it's important to include uh, this question in the um, the survey and also in the in the um, technical um, related with the technical problem because uh, that's how uh, we can measure if if the the platform or the program or the system we use to deliver the, the training is helpful for us. For example, if the attendees ex experience some technical problems with the with the video conference or, or they don't hear the the train the training uh, or there are delay or or, or lag in the in the image or they don't see the resources and uh, that affects the the learning of the of the attending so it's important to improve constantly uh, these technical issues and also um, like have a plan to to um, cover these issues or um, yeah cover or, or or fix this issue during the the training, uh, like having some steps to to help the the attendees, and so it's important to to collect this this information for future uh, occasions. Okay, very good. So yes, technical things also might happen, and it's a very good idea even when everything works nice, or we perceive that works very good. Uh, to get the opinion of some people. So you will be able to, to improve in that aspect as well. So, okay, the last one is post-training survey questions. So, Heidi. Sure, teacher. It's post-training survey questions. When your learners have completed the course, it is the perfect opportunity to issue a traveling evaluation survey to get honest feedback on their experience. A training evaluation survey can help you learn more about the learner's satisfaction and overall customer experience. What are some ideas for training evaluation questions? Certificates and awards. Certificates and awards can help learners feel greater sense of achievement at the end of a course, while also helping with motivation through the course and professional growth. If your 
if you offer a certificate as part of the course, it's a good idea to get feedback on this in your post-training evaluation survey. <clears throat> try, adding, <clears throat> sorry, try adding these questions to your survey. Did you like the course offered a certificate? Where did you, were you satisfied with the quality of the certificate you received? Would, would earning a certificate or award help you feel more committed to the course? Did you share the certificate with your colleagues? How likely are you share the certificate on social media? How do you intend to use the certificate going forward? Did you feel that the certificate improved your overall perception of the course? How much did the course certificate influence your decision to take the course? Would you prefer to take a course that offers a certificate over one that doesn't? Is there anything else that you would like to receive after completing the course? Okay, what do you get here? Teacher, uh, in, personally, I, I like when I get the certificate after a course, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, but, you, can, uh -huh. you, can add it, you can even add it to your resume, right? Yeah, that's exactly. And, I mean, that's very nice. your skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel very well when you receive a certificate with your name. Uh, you are expecting that one. So when you see that one, I mean, it's going to be very satisfactory. So this is a very good idea, of course, depending on the course. But yeah, this is uh, something that we also need to get feedback from the students as well uh, to know more about that one. Uh, I believe that everybody everybody wants to get certificates once you finish their, uh, their training. So that is, is something very good. Teacher, do we get a certificate after the final, the final course? Well, actually you should be getting a certificate after every module. The problem with this really? support, yeah, is that it takes a little while, I mean, let me tell you, I took a course two years ago and I still have received that certificate from Insport. They send it. Uh, eventually they yeah. send it. Yeah. But when it's going to be received? Well, to be honest with you, we don't know. But they send okay. it. Yeah. Good, perfect. Okay, the other one is learner satisfaction. That is going to be for Fernando Gonzalez. Okay, teacher. Learner satisfaction. As well as getting in there on the learning experience during the course, it is also important to get an idea of your learning satisfaction overall. High learning satisfaction is the key to winning more business. So you don't want to skip this step. Here are some learner satisfaction questions to use in your training evaluation survey. Do you, do you feel that you achieved your learning goals? How satisfied were you with this course? Did the course meet your expectations? Is there anything that you were hope, hoping to learn that wasn't covered? Do you feel like your skill had improved as a result of the course? What did you enjoy most about the course? What do you find most challenging about the course? How could the learning experience be improved? Would you consider taking another course on the same platform? How likely are you to recommend the course to a friend? Pro tip, if someone is likely to recommend the course to a friend, consider reaching out to them for a testimonial to add to your website. Okay, what do you get on this one? Uh, it's in it's important, it's important uh, making a survey after the, after the course for gathering the opinion of the, of the audience or the people that participate in that course, because based on the, on their answer, you can, you can take um, some points of uh, um, bears. Points of better, teacher. Yeah, better, yeah. 
you can What's improve, that? right? Ah, yeah, yeah, but points of better is po puntos de mejora? Points of improvement. A uh, points of improvement, okay. Yeah, based on, on their opinion, you can you can type point of improvement and improve the improve the course for the next for the next time they teach that. Okay, definitely. So that is true, and uh, these are like exactly what we are talking about. I mean, it's about the satisfaction of the audience, right? Are you satisfied? Uh, did you meet your expectations? Um, did you enjoy the course? Things like that are, are very important. So then we have past course experience. Let's check into that one. Let's see. Okay, let me check. Uh, David. Okay, post course experience. Yep. When learners have finished, give me a minute. When learners have finished the course, you can also add training evaluation questions on the post course experience and follow up process, helping you gain more information on learners' experience after training ends. Check out the survey evaluation questions and samples to get started. How would you rate the post-training experience? How satisfied were you with the number of follow-up after the course? Did the follow-ups meet your expectations? Would you have liked to receive additional materials after you finished the course? Would you have liked to receive the course materials in print? Would you have liked to have the chance to ask the instructor more questions? How would you rate the guidance you receive after the course? Were you satisfied with the opportunities to provide feedback of the course? Did you feel like your needs were met after the course ended? Was it easy to apply what you learned from the course in real world context? Okay, what do you get in this one? But I see that is important. I I I think that here in El Salvador, we don't have this experience. After training, it is, uh, I don't know, I, I, I didn't see it much in, in trainings in, in our country. Only go to the course and uh, that, that's all. And maybe if you read the, the notes after some couple of days after, uh, you remember some question, did you like to, to ask? To the instructor, by did you have the experience post training experience? I, I think it's uh, something very helpful, very helpful because, uh, like, uh, when I am teaching math, I do an exercise and all the students say, Oh, what is it? <laughs> what is it? Because the teacher do it. But uh, when they are uh, alone trying to do it, it is, it is difficult. Uh, it's different, it's different. It's not the same exercise because it's more difficult for us because the teacher is not there. And uh, they, in this time, in this time, they can ask uh, by uh, chat, by diverse uh, means of uh, media or, or, or uh, mails. Uh, it's easy to communicate with the teacher in every day, time, in every day. And uh, it is important because uh, teacher, I, I, I get stuck with, with this, in, in this part. And with a little uh, guy, they can follow. But if they, they stop doing, and the next time is more difficult for them. Uh, I think the post-training experience is a good idea and definitely we need to do it. Very good, perfect. So definitely right. So. Uh, service are very interesting, are very good because it helps us understand them better, uh, the other people's point of view. So this is something we need to be doing. Okay, so the next one says, what tools can you use for survey evaluation questions? Dora, Elizabeth. What tools can you use for survey evaluation questions? There are a range of different tools you can use to deliver survey evaluation questions. 
to easily collect information from your training evaluation question is a good idea to use a content management system. Technic, ten, ten Kifis has a survey tool built into the course creation platform to make a designing your training evaluation survey as easy as possible. You could also, also opt for type for which are integrated with technical. Very good, you perfect. That is okay. it, thank you. Okay, so yes, I mean, there are different tools that we can use for us to, to send a survey. There are a lot of websites, there are a lot of tools. One of the most popular is the Google Forms because you would be able not only to create a form and send that to the emails on the people that are inscribed on the training, but also you will be able to, to create graphics, to create like an analyze board from the forms, from the from the results that you have whenever they receive and send the forms. So that is a very good tool, and it, of course it's free, so you can take advantage of that one. But anyways, if you want to use survey or to create a survey, there are a lot of websites that will be able to help you with that one. And here we have a a survey example. Let me just check if that loads. It's taking a while. Yeah, it seems it's not gonna work. Oh, here is it. So for example, this is a, a survey of eight questions only. Of course, this is for short, the training. So how likely is that you would recommend this session to a friend or colleague? Let's put something just to move on. So look how the interaction of the survey is very nice, right? How relevant is the material you uh, to your role? Uh, let's put very relevant. How clear was the presentation of information? Let's say very clear. How do you feel about the amount of information presented? Yeah, let's took, yeah, this one. How engaging was your instructor? Very, let's say. How would you rate your instructor's knowledge of the material? Very good. How clear are you on the takeaways from the session? Extremely. And this is something that we need to consider as well. Any other comments? So everybody is open to provide a comment uh, and the other, so you can see that the most of the questions that we have here are uh, like with mult, multiple choice. So that is very easy because you would be able to, to create like a graphic and then analyze better the results of the survey. But anyway, sometimes it's good for us to ask, to ask, how do you feel about something? Problem is that you need to invest time on reading and categorize uh, answer by answer. So that is uh, the real problem. So you need to invest time on this one. It's something that we need to do. So this was an example. And well, we need to move on with the book as well. So before we mo uh, move to the book, do you have any questions about the service or the creation of the service or kinds of questions that we can ask there? No questions. Okay, so this is a little bit of grammar, how to use columns. So let's see. Yeah. Marcos, could you please help me read in the chart? Uh, okay, the, the chart here. Uh, how to use col columns, part one. Look at the example in the box, then complete the exercise below. A paragraph is a group of sentences that develop a main idea. 
A paragraph can stand by itself as a complete piece of writing, or it can be a section of a longer piece of writing like an essay. 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 Okay. The well-developed paragraph has a topic sentence. The topic sentence expresses the main idea of the paragraph. Keep in mind that titles are, are usually single words or short phrases. But the topic sentence of a paragraph must always be a complete sentence. Example one, Lego is at the top at the top corporate social resp responsible companies of this year. We spend four point four points, having jumped from his fifth place last year. While a topic sentence presents the main idea of a paragraph. All the other sentences serve the purpose to explain, extend, or support this general sentence. These other sentences are supporting details. They are used as a piece of evidence by writers to make the main idea of the paragraph convincing and interesting to the readers. Example, um, in uh, Analysis done by financial experts, Lego beat all the other companies in the perception that it behaves ethically, conducts business fairly, operates transparently, protects the environment, and supports worthy causes. Example two Lego has embraced corporate social responsibility from top to the bottom. The bottom. Say Chief Research Officer Stephen Hans Griffiths. A paragraph also needs to have a concluding sentence, which has one main purpose, to give the reader a sense of having a right to a satisfying ending to the topic discussed. Uh, for example, Lego build chain and sustainable material center. Initiatives and its partnership with the World Wildlife Fund are part of the Danish toy company push for sustainability and corporate social responsibility. Very good, perfect, thank you. So this is very similar to one that we checked in the previous uh, module. Anyways, uh, so yes, the topic sentence. Uh, remember that, oh, this is very important because remember that you are going to uh, write an essay for the tougher, right? So. Yeah, this is something very important because we need to remember that there is a topic sentence, okay, that expresses what you are going to discuss. So, and then also have like supporting details. So you have a topic one, and then you have other ideas, two or three more ideas that are going to support about the topic to provide like the hypothesis or anything like that. And then the conclusion that is like, uh, this is going to be like that one, okay? So, says exercise, uh, well, first of all, do you have any questions about this? Not sure. Good. So we're gonna do the exercise time. It says, read and organize the paragraph below using the model above. Topic sentence, supporting details, and concluding sentence. This is kind of easy, but I will give you a couple of minutes, okay? So let's do it. I will be waiting.
Okay, have you finished? Not yet, teacher. I need a couple okay. of minutes more. Of course, of course. Okay, have you finished already? Yes, teacher. Okay, let's work together then. So, what will be the topic sentence? Mm. The Walt Disney Company. Yes. The, the the very good. So, that would be the topic uh, sentence. The Walt Disney Company is one of the largest and most well-known corporations practicing corporate social responsibility, CSR, all the way down the line in their business model. And what would be the supporting details? As the, the large media. And the last one. Economics. As the largest as media. media. Uh -huh. As the largest media and entertainment conglomerate. Very good. And the other one? The yeah. last one. Voluntarism. The goal is, is to benefit for me. Well, actually, it's going to be voluntarism is a major focus for Disney. Yes, this one. Okay. And the conclusion then is? The first one. The goal is to benefit. The goal is to benefit. Very good. Their goal is to benefit their guests. Very nice. So mm -hmm. that is it. Very easy. Okay. Uh, Conferences, we checked that already. Okay, so how to use enough plus a noun, infinitive or adjective, enough plus an infinitive. Let's see. Um, Roxana, could you please help me reading this chart? Okay. <clears throat> and now. Enough, express just the right 
quantity, quality, degree of what is need or expected. Enough occurs, is correct? Occurs. Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. Enough occurs in two common patterns with infinitives. Enough plus now plus infinitive. Examples. Experts training, experts trainers, sorry, recommend to plan enough time to cover the activities in the training plan to avoid rushing. B, another important trip of future trainers is to provide enough hand on activities to boost learning. And adjective plus enough plus infinitive. Examples, A, the materials presented by the trainer were suitable enough to meet the manager's expectation. B, the training agenda was completed enough to achieve the learning objectives. Okay, very good. So yeah, we have enough plus a noun and plus an infinitive or adjective plus enough uh, plus an infinitive. So the difference is also the position, right? So if you use a noun, you're going to use first enough. So for example, expert trainers recommend to plan enough time to cover activities in the training plan to avoid rushing. So first we use enough because we are using a noun time and then the infinitive, of course. On the other hand, we are going to use first the adjective and then enough, and then the infinitive. So for example, the materials presented by the trainer were suitable enough to meet the manager's expectations. So the position of enough is important and is going to depend the, uh, on the word that we use, if it's a noun or if it's an adjective. Do you have any questions on this? No, Good, so let's make the exercise here. Number six, read the following topic sentences. Identify four mistakes related to the use of enough plus infinitives. Correct the mistakes and compare. So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to uh, correct. There are six sentences, four are not correct.
Ready. Okay, everybody has finished? Yes, teacher. Okay, so number one, what do you think about? Who wants to share number one? It is okay, teacher. The yeah. number one is okay. okay. I agree. Okay, so number one, no mistakes. Good. Who wants to share number two? Me, teacher. Okay. You seen enough. Activities to evaluate participants' learning is a good strategy to assess if the training is working. We need to Very change the, the, the known activities. Very good. We need to change the positions, right? Enough should be first because it's a noun. Good. Number three. Who wants to share number three? Hey, teacher. Okay. I think that number three is uh, enough plus, no, sorry, adjective plus enough plus infinity. So it can be the training materials should be appealing enough to get trainees engaged. Okay, everybody agrees on this? Yes, teacher, I agree. Yeah, yes, teacher. good, perfect. What about number four? Who wants to share number four? Me, teacher. Okay. My thing, season trainers recommend to integrate enough interactive activities to keep participants motivated. Very good, enough interactive activities. Nice. Everybody agrees on that? Yes, teacher. Anyway. Good. What about number five? Who wants to share number five? Me again, teacher. Okay. A useful tip for trainers to choose a seat arrangement that is suitable enough to promote trainees' integration. For example, horse show or circle. Very good, perfect. So everybody agrees on that one? Yes. Okay, so what about number six? Who wants to share number six? Number six. I didn't, I didn't find mistake in number six. But okay, no. everybody agrees? Yes, teacher. No teacher? No. I see. I see. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Okay. A successful training allows trainers and know to be involved with those hands-on activities. Mm, okay, enough to be involved. Mm -hmm. uh, what about, huh? To be mm -hmm. involved enough. To be involved enough. Yes. What do you think? I think that too. Okay, so the question here is what is involved? Is that a noun or is that an adjective? Involved is a noun. Mm, okay. No. Is it, it, it like a verb, but, uh, but it's acting like a noun? Okay, so yeah, actually uh, it seems that the exercise is wrong uh, where it says that there are four mistakes, but yeah, involved in this case is an adjective, it's describing yeah. something, right? Actually it's in scri uh, describing the verb. So it has to be, yes, it has to be to be involved enough. Yes. To have yes. An activity. Yeah, that will be it. So the mistakes is on the direction that says four mistakes, but there are not four, there are five. It's adjective, teacher, in both. Yeah, in this situation, it's acting as an adjective. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good, perfect. And we have the last part of grammar for the book. Maya, we finished already. How to open a paragraph effectively. Introductory strategies, part one. Okay, so let's see. Who wants to read that one? That is the last one. Me, teacher. Okay. Me. Okay. Uh, whoever... Sorry? 
Yeah, whoever wants to do it, you can read it. Okay. A hook or introductory sentence usually precedes the topic sentence in a paragraph. The function of the introductory sentence is to catch the reader's attention. So they read the complete paragraph. There are varied introductory strategies, depending on your style, purpose, of, and the audience. You will choose the one that is most suitable. The first one is the quote. A quote is a sentence that holds some general wisdom or an expert opinion. A quote at the beginning of a paragraph gives the reader a preview of what the composition will be about. But writers usually connect the quotation to the topic sentence. Example, you cannot unify everyone's thoughts, but you can unify everyone's thoughts a common goal. As pointed out by Yakma, a common goal is that generates unity and unity leads to a more efficient organization. The second strategy is the relevant questions. Another effective way to catch the reader's attention is to present so provoking questions preceding the topic sentence. The idea is for the audience to answer the questions as they read your paragraph. Very good. Thank you. So this is about how to open a paragraph effectively. So please remember whenever you are doing essays uh, to use this kind of strategies. So a hook or an introductory sentence usually precedes the topic. So it's before the topic, the topic sentence, I mean, in a paragraph. So uh, the main purpose of this one is to, to get the attention of the readers. So it is to, to point you in one direction, okay? So there are two strategies that we can use depending on the style that we want to use. A quote is also, it's very common. You can see that sometimes it's very common for any kind of writing to, to check into that one. So it says you cannot unify anyone's thoughts, but you can unify everyone through a common goal. As pointed out by Jack, my common goal is what generates unity. And unity leads to a more efficient organization. So that is the quote example. And then you have the topic sentence. That is the one that we checked before. Or you can use relevant questions. For example, another effective way to catch the reader's attention is to present thought provoking questions preceding the topic sentence. The idea is for the audience to answer the questions as they read your paragraph. So, for example, if we are speaking about the first one, it's like, uh, is it possible to unify everyone's thoughts? Okay. So, when you do something like that, you will be able to. To, to get the attention of everybody and then throughout the paragraph, uh, they will be able to, to identify that if it's possible or not, how it's going to be that. So uh, both are very important and we need to try to, to integrate that whenever we are writing, okay? Any questions on this? We saw that uh, this is important for, for uh every communication you if you are uh, doing a, a presentation we saw that uh, we need the opening that is a, a hook the opening of the presentation and if you are writing a book is uh, important what is the first uh, five 15 or 30 seconds of the lectors or readers can can get if they get a hook, uh, they get the stuck with the book. And uh, even though in the, in the songs, it is important that the song has a hook to uh, get the attention of the, of the listeners to get the, involved with the, the, the song. It is uh, important in every communication way, even in teaching, in, in uh, every field of uh, we need to communicate, we need uh, this, uh, a hook to, to get the attention, the reader of the listener. Uh, I think it is important. That is so true. So yes, I mean, to get the attention of the uh, 
listener or of the reader is very important in any kind of communication, as you say, even in the songs, in the movies, the first minutes is like presenting what is this about, and then you know, right? Uh, if you really want to listen or to read about that. So these are two techniques that we can use. Please consider them whenever you want to create a paragraph in English. So uh, here is suppose that we need to write two versions of introductory sentences of a paragraph applying to two strategies shown in the box above. We are not going to do that right now, but please remember that since tomorrow we are going to we're going to present, we're going to, to train, to deliver the training. We can use any of those to present the topic. So it's a very good idea. And uh, also, depending of course, on what you are going to present or what is the training that you are going to present, you can deliver a survey at the end, or you can use any of the techniques of the uh, of the ones that we have checked. I mean, if it's a workshop, it's like to do some things. If it's a training, it's like go step by step on something that we need to learn. Things like that are going to be very, very important. Good. And my friends, in that way, we're going to finish the book in mind. That is going to be very, very. It, it was kind of easy, I believe, but I don't know if you have any questions before we move on. In the in the platform teacher in the section 3.1, 3.1, the, the last question I seen is wrong. I, I don't know if the question are wrong or I am wrong, but 3.1 and 3.3. I, I think I, there are uh, the platform because I, I have think to say the platform because when you uh, well at the end in the final test uh, the same. Uh, um, question is in the final test and if you write like you wrote in the 3.1 in the final test is is right okay no so it's number number five in the 3.3 .3, is that so and 3.12 3.1 okay. let's go to 3.1 okay 3.1 is going to be number three Is that the one that is not taken? I am opening right yeah, now. That's it. Okay. okay. So it should be, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, what I have here is that you have to enter. There are too many places to visit. Only like that, to visit. Yeah, it's, a, it's like an error. Before we okay. leave, it's not there. But well, if you enter. So there are too many places to visit. If you right. enter like that one, it's going to be correct. The number three yes. on 3.1. All right. It's, it's correct. correct with that. It's correct. <laughs> and but it's not the correct way. Okay, the 3.3, .3, number three, you say? Number, number five. 3.3, number, three, number three, five. Number three and five, I have. The package is too heavy to leave. Okay. Let's check number three. Number three it should be my grandfather is too old to play those games oh, and a period. Yeah, it, is a, it is okay, yes. Number five is <laughs> the package. Yeah, the thing is that somebody was asking about number three as well. So that's why oh, I okay. said that. Me, teacher, I, I have an, a mistake in that number three. But uh, I yeah, have it, uh -huh. it should be my grandfather is too old to play those games in a period. Yes. My grandfather will to play those games. My grandfather eat. That is the mistake. Eat. Oh, ah, yes, all. yes. Eat. eat. Sorry. Instead of this. Uh, it says eat. That is a mistake. Okay. Yeah. OK. And number five. Okay. Number five should be the package is too heavy to lift. And there is a period there that you need to enter. To lift period by yourself, period again. To lift period Without to, to be, only to lift. Okay, okay, to lift, period. By yourself, period. Yeah, that's correct. 
Uh, yeah, there are some errors here, but I have to check. In the in the final evaluation is correct. Yeah, in the final one, it says that uh, the way that it should be is the correct one, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Nice that we discuss on that one. So please remember that we need to finish the platform by next Sunday. And also please remember that the salary from Winsafor is going to be done together on Monday. Any other question before we finish? The only one that in the platform is not correct is the one for the beginning, right? As far as I remember, I guess it's uh, in the number one unit. Let me just double check that even yeah. though you that is the only one that is yeah, that is not taking, I mean, it's a multiple choice, as I remember, and huh? Huh? it doesn't take any of those, so, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, I Very just want to keep on Okay, good. So, let's check the attendance, and then let's go to bed. So, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Nice. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present. Jose, Mar Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Present. Good. I'm sorry. Okay. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. I'm here. Good. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Good. So the one one of today is for Suleyma Yvonne. My friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful night and see you tomorrow with the trainings. I want to check what you are going to present. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Have a nice night. Good night. Good night. Yeah, second, please. Of course. Uh, I want to inform you tomorrow I will have a really important commitment. So I will stay connected as a listener only. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. Hello, do you have any questions that we would like to check or do you want to practice? <laughs>